Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on the year in summative and it's question number two from that package. It says the country planning team wants to build a water tower that is the same distance from two adjacent towns. On a local map, the towns have coordinates 1, 3, and 7, 11. Explain how you could use a right bisector to find possible locations for the water tower. So here's what we have. We have two towns, which I'm labeling A and B, and we want to build a third thing on this map, so a third dot, which is a water tower. And what we want is that water tower to be exactly the same distance away from B as it is from A. Now clearly, that water tower is not a good in a good location, but we know that we could use something called a right bisector to find locations for the water tower. So just to make sure we understand what a right bisector is, a right bisector is a line, and it's a line that has particular properties. Um, we need to think about this. There is a line, whether real or imagined, that connects points A and B. The right bisector is, is another line that intersects this line exactly at the midpoint, and is also perpendicular to AB. So right tells us that it's perpendicular, and bisector tells us that it cuts it in two, and that's what the midpoint does as well. So we need to use a right bisector to find locations for the water tower. Now hopefully you learned in class that every point on the right bisector is exactly equidistant from the ends of the line segments. Oh, how come it's not? There it is. So again, hopefully you learned that every point on that right bisector is going to be equidistant. And what we need to do in part A is explain that. So let's look again. And I'm going to explain it kind of casually, and then I have it written up nicely if you ever want to, I don't know, pause the video. Um, so here we have, again, line segment AB. So the, what we need to do is we need to find the midpoint of the line segment connecting AB. So there's the midpoint. I've labeled it M. And we know that a midpoint will cut AB into two equal pieces. In other words, it will bisect segment AB. Now we need a line that is perpendicular to AB that passes through M. And this line is the perpendicular bisector. So there's the perpendicular bisector. And again, how can we use this to find where the water tower is? Every point that's on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from A and B. And let's explain why. So in order to explain why, again, what we're trying to do is show that the distance from P to B and the distance from A to P is exactly the same distance. Oh, those are close enough to straight lines, right? Um, so we need to show that AP is the same distance as BP. And it's actually pretty straightforward if you notice this. I've created two triangles, and I'm coloring them in just so you can see them. There's a blue triangle over here, which we'll call triangle BPM. And there's a green triangle over here, which we will call triangle APM. If we can show that these two triangles are the same triangle, or congruent, then we know that the le red line must be the same as the red line, or that AP equals BP. And here's how we do it. We know that both triangles share this line. So they both share line PM. So obviously that's the same length in both triangles. So PM is the same length as PM, and obviously it's the same line. We also know that because the purple line is the perpendicular bisector, that it makes a 90 degree angle in this triangle and a 90 degree angle in this triangle. So they both have a 90 degree angle. Also, because M is the midpoint, we know that MB is the same distance as MA. So MB is the same distance as MA. So by something called side angle side congruency, we know that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And if they're congruent, all sides are the same length and all angles are the same. And since all sides are the same length, I know that BP must be the same as AP, and that's true no matter where I put that point P. 
So that's the explanation as to how you can use a right bisector to find a water tower location. And the answer is that every single spot on that right bisector will be equidistant from A and B. So it's not just put it at the midpoint, because maybe there's a lake or something there, um, but anywhere on the right bisector would be an equidistant location from A and B. So what I have here is I have the exact same explanation. It's just written out a lot nicer. Um, so if you want it to, feel free to pause the video. Um, let me just quickly go through this again. That we need to consider the line segment that connects A and B. And M is going to be the midpoint of AB. And by definition, M slices AB perfectly in half. Now we're going to draw a perpendicular line, close enough, um, and that perpendicular line passes through M. And what we're required to do is to show that every single point called P, so every point P on that perpendicular bisector is equidistant between B and A. And here's how we do it. Again, it's using congruent triangles. Since M is the midpoint, we know that MA is the same as MB. Since P is on the perpendicular bisector, we know that this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle. So we have 90 degree angles are the same angle and the two sides share a length PM. And so by side angle, side congruency, these are congruent triangles and therefore AP is the same length as BP. There you go. Kind of formal for grade 10s, but not that hard. So now that we know how we can use the right bisector to find the location for the water tower, now we actually have to find the equation for that right bisector. So finding an equation for the right bisector means that we're going to find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to AB and that passes through the midpoint of AB. And so we need to do this. First we need to find the slope of AB. So we need to find the slope of AB so that we can find the negative reciprocal, meaning the perpendicular slope. Then we need to find the midpoint of AB and then find the equation of that line. Now I've put a diagram here, but not because I want to find slope by counting, but just because it helps me as a visual learner to see what's going on. And also I can kind of spot an error in my math if it doesn't make sense on my diagram. <clears throat> so here we go. So first of all, we're going to find the slope of AB. Uh-oh, okay. So the slope of AB. So we have a formula for slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is how I like to think of the slope formula as a bunch of empty brackets ready to be for me to put numbers into those brackets. So y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. And if we do the math on this, we're going to get 8 over 6. And of course, reducing it, that gets 4 over 3. So apparently, the slope of this line, oh, that's not a line. Uh, that's a parabola. We're not there. Um, the slope of this line is 4 over 3. And of course, the nice thing about having a diagram is I can actually quickly check and say, hey, I think I did my math right. Now, what we want is we want the perpendicular slope. So the perpendicular slope, oh, look, I'm drawing little lines. The perpendicular slope. would therefore be the negative reciprocal, which is negative 3 over 4. So that is the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to need that in a minute. For now, I'm just going to remember what it is. We also need the midpoint of AB. So the midpoint, capital M for midpoint, is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, and again, uh, now I'm going to sub into the formula. That's just my style because otherwise my brain gets confused. So x1, x2, y1, y2. So what do we get? We get 8 over 2, and we get 14 over 2. So our midpoint is at 4, 7. And again, just because I have the diagram, I can check and make sure that that makes sense. There's AB. And if I go over 4 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, look at that. I think my math is right. So there's the midpoint. So 
the slope was negative 4 over 3, sorry, negative 3 over 4. The midpoint was 4, 7. So now we can go ahead and actually find the equation. So the equation of a line starts like this. And then we substitute what we know. So we know that we have a slope of, and I want to make sure I get it right, negative 3 over 4. So the slope is negative 3 over 4. And the point that we have is 4 comma 7. So that's the information that we're going to substitute in to the equation and then solve for the unknown b value. So y equals mx plus c. So m is the slope, that's negative 3 over 4, and here's x and y, so x and y. So doing the math, I get 7 equals negative 3 plus c, adding 3, b equals 10, the equation of the right bisector is y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 10. And again, I'm going to draw it really quickly on my diagram just to make sure that my answer is reasonable. So there's that. And if I did this, I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, that looks to be pretty perpendicular. It looks to go through at about a starting point of 10. And it has a slope of down 3 and over 4, pretty darn close. Um, so there's the equation of my line. Now, of course, it's grade 10, so probably um, we should put that in standard form. I mean, I certainly love standard form. So let's put it in standard form. What the heck? I don't know if your teacher needs it, but it's always good practice. So it's y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 10. I'm going to multiply everything by 4 because I don't like having, you're not allowed fractions in standard form. So multiplying everything by 4 gives me 4y equals negative 3x plus 40. Now I need to move everything to the left in the proper order. So 3x plus 4y minus 40 equals 0. There's the right bisector. And any point on that line is a valid location for the water tower because it will be equidistant between A and B.